we're going to talk a little bit about the difference between assuming equal variance or equal standard deviation versus non-equal variance or non-equal standard deviation at the population level as it applies to the two sample t-test or as we'll see it also applies to analysis of variance. We're also going to derive the standard error for the difference in means. So um, we're going to focus on the concept here. So the main question we want to ask ourselves is do we believe at the population level the variability around the mean in these two groups is roughly the same or do we think that it's quite different and one group might be much more variable than the other? The way we approach the analysis um, depends slightly on do we think that these two groups have roughly the same variability and we can assume that the variability in group 1 and the variability in group 2 are two different estimates of the same thing versus do we think that one group is much more variable than the other and we need to keep their two estimates of variability um, separate. So a few ways we can get at trying to decide do we think the equal standard deviation or equal variance assumption is valid or not. Um, so let's talk about a few approaches to doing this. So do we think they're equal or not? The simplest approach I'm going to call the eyeball test. And of course it's a bit subjective, but looking at the plot, um, say box plots of the two groups and looking at do we think the variability in the two is roughly the same, that any difference we saw was more of a difference due to sampling variability, or do we think that the two are quite different and at the population level they're not the same? A second way we can try and get at making a decision is by comparing the standard deviations of the two. So we can take the largest standard deviation, divide it by the smaller of standard deviation of the two, and check, is this greater than two? If the larger of the standard deviations is more than double the smallest, then we're going to work with the non-equal assumption. If the largest is not more than double the smallest, we can work with the assumption that they're approximately equal at the population level. So these are two approaches, and they're a bit subjective. You can also do more formal tests. You can test the null hypothesis that at the population level, right, the population standard deviation of group one is the same as it is for group two, versus an alternative, the standard deviation of group one is not the same as it is for group two. And you may see these expressed um, as the variances are equal versus the, the variances are not. Same thing, right? Remember, the variance is the standard deviation squared. Standard deviation squared root of the variance. So you can express it either way. Formal tests for doing this are Levine's test and there's also Bartlett's test. And there are a few other tests or slightly uh, different approaches. Um, you can read a little bit more about these if you want. Um, one note, Bartlett's test is a little bit sensitive to departures from normality. Okay, so it also assumes that the two groups are approximately normally distributed. A lot of these tests have slightly lower power, meaning if there is a difference, they're um, less likely to find that. Yeah, but these are some approaches to doing it. Often we might work with just the kind of rough guide of comparing the two and seeing if one is not more than double the other. Now, let's get to deriving the um, standard error for the difference in means. First we'll do it assuming non-equal variances, and then we'll do it assuming equal variances. So to do that, we're going to work with some properties. Um, we've learned earlier that the standard deviation for the mean is, or sometimes we call this the standard error for the mean, is the standard deviation for the individuals divided by the square root of the sample size. Okay, or the variance for the mean is the variance for the individuals divided by the sample size. And we also have this property, the variance of x minus y, okay, the difference in two variables, is equal to the variance of x plus the variance of y if x and y are independent. And this is not a typo. Hopefully you can, um, first let's go at it mathematically. If you thought the variance of x minus y should be the variance of x minus the variance of y, um, first you can think, what if the variance of x and the variance of y were the same? Right? If you took the variance of x minus the variance of y, you're going to end up with zero. And that doesn't make sense to have no variability, right? 
if we're taking the variability and the difference between two variables, taking their difference shouldn't reduce um, variability. Um, hopefully that made sense. Getting at it conceptually, here we're taking the variance of x minus y. Okay? And we can think when we put those two together, we get the variability that's in x and the variability that's in y. Right? So I always like to think of a conceptual example. Let's think of um, a company's profits, which are, um, I guess, revenue minus expenses. Right? How much money did you make minus what did it cost you? If you want to look at variable and profits, right, it's going to look at how variable is their revenue, the money brought in, plus there's some variability in their costs. So the variance or the variability of their overall profit is going to depend on how variable is the money coming in and how variable is the money going out. It's going to be the combination of those two. So first, let's work out the standard error under the assumption of non-equal variances. What we'd like to build our way up to is finding, what well, in the end we'd like to find the standard deviation or the standard error for the difference in means. Okay. But we're going to start with the variance because a lot of our properties are expressed in terms of variance. So the variance of the mean of group 1 minus the mean of group 2 can be expressed as the variance of the mean of group 1 plus the variance for the mean of group 2. Right? And again, this is because group 1 and group 2 are assumed to be independent. Now, we know what's the variability in the mean for group 1? That's the variability of the individuals. Right? So S squared, the variance of the individuals in group 1 divided by their sample size. And the variance for the mean of group 2 is the variance for the individuals in group 2 divided by their sample size. So from this, we can find that the standard deviation for the difference in means, or what we often start to call the standard error for the difference in two means, is just the square root of the variance. So again, we're taking the sample standard deviation of group 1 and squaring that to get their variance divided by their sample size. The sample standard deviation of group 2 squared to get the variance divided by their sample size. Add them together, take the square root. That's how we get the standard error for the difference in means of group 1 and group 2. Okay, again, when working in applied setting, it's not so important to plug into this form and calculate it, but having an understanding of how do we get that standard error um, helps deepen your understanding of some of these approaches. Now, let's get to um, assuming non, um, sorry, assuming equal variances. So, let's work our way up there. What if we were to assume equal variance? So again, this assumption is saying at the population level, we believe the variability around the mean for group 1 and group 2 are roughly the same. Or in other words, the sample standard deviation for group 1 and the sample standard deviation for group 2 are two different estimates of that same common variance. So in order to get at that, um, right, assuming that the variance or the standard deviation group 1 and the standard deviation group 2 are two different estimates of the same thing, what we can do is first take what we call a pooled estimate. And essentially, this is just a weighted average. We're going to take the estimate of the variance, right, the sample variance for group one, and we're going to weight it by their sample size. Okay, or weight it by their degrees of freedom. And we're going to take the variance for group two, right, the sample variance for group two, weighted by their sample size, and okay, care their degrees of freedom, divided by n1 minus one plus n2 minus 1. Okay, so hopefully you can see here what's going on is we've got the estimate of the standard deviation for group 1, the estimate of the standard deviation for group 2, and we're assuming at the population level these are the same. Okay, so these are two different estimates of the same thing. If we believe that to be true, what we can do is take a weighted average of our two estimates. 
We work on the scale of the variance, so we square them to get the variance, and then we take a weighted average of that, and we call it the pooled variance. Then, from there, we can use the same approach, right? We've already built up the standard error for the difference in the two means. But rather than um, using the sample variance for group one and group two, we've now got this assumption. These are two different estimates of the same thing, right? At the population level, we believe they're the same. So we can replace these with our pooled estimate or our weighted average of the two. Pooled variance divided by sample size for group one. The pooled variance sample size for group two. Now, one thing that we didn't talk about, let's quickly mention that. This here has degrees of freedom n1 plus n2 minus 2, or sometimes it's written n1 minus 1 plus n2 minus 1. So here we've pulled the data together. We can think of it, we have n1 plus n2, we have all the data to try and estimate this common variance. Right? We've pulled it together and we're using the data for group 1 and the data for group 2 to try and estimate the common variability. And here, when we assume non-equal variance, the degrees of freedom are a little bit more difficult to get at. They're somewhere between the minimum of n1 minus 1 and n2 minus 1 okay, as a lower limit and as an upper limit n1 plus n2 minus 2. Okay, again, we don't want to get too distracted and that's why I saved this for the end. We don't want to get too distracted on how do we get the exact degrees of freedom. Again, that's not so important. A piece of software can do that for us or we can read about the details more later on. What we want to do is stay at the conceptual level of what's the main difference between these two assumptions. Okay. The main difference is if we assume equal variance, we're assuming these two different estimates are actually two estimates of the same thing. We can use that to our advantage. We can take a weighted average of those two estimates to get a more reliable estimate and use that in here in getting our estimate of the standard error. So again, the calculations aren't so important. Um, you probably aren't going to be plugging into these formulas much or ever, um, but the understanding they give you of the difference between these two assumptions is a bit more important. Let's talk just for a moment about what's gained or what's lost by each of these approaches. So when assuming non-equal variance, um, I guess one of the pros is you have fewer assumptions, right? Assuming that these two, um, the variability in these two groups is the same, is just another assumption you add, which may or may not be a realistic. And if the negative is you get a slightly less precise estimate of the standard error for the difference in means. Because they're using these two different estimates. Looking at the equal variance or equal standard deviation assumption, um, it's a bit more of a stricter assumption, right? It's adding another assumption that needs to be met and may or may not be realistic. But if it's met, you gain some strength. Rather than having n1 observations to estimate this and n2 observations to estimate that, you have n1 plus n2 observations. You have all the data to try and estimate the variability. Okay, so you gain something from that. It's important to note that this assumption of equal variance flows through a lot of statistical methods. In the two sample t-tests, we choose which assumption we want to make. When working with analysis of variance, a topic that's coming up, that method assumes variability in all the groups is approximately the same. When working with linear regression, it assumes that variability around the regression line is constant. They're always the same. So this equal variance or equal standard deviation assumption flows through a lot of other statistical methods. Hope you guys liked the video. Subscribe to our channel. Like our videos. Share our videos. Statistics is almost as beautiful as a unicorn. Stick around guys, because we got lots more.